Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the quadcopter building for beginners series. Now last time at the end of the last video it looked something like this and we actually had it flying but there was one thing missing that pretty much everybody puts in a modern multi-rotor like this and that is FPV equipment. Now what FPV is it means that we install a little camera somewhere and we install a way for that video to be transmitted and we typically wear something like these walk snow goggles, there are lots of systems about, on our eyes, and we can actually look directly out of the camera as though we were sat in the driving seat inside the model. It's a fantastic way to fly, and frames like the one that we've just built are absolutely made for FPV equipment to be put in. However, there's a couple of basic types, and I want to kind of cover those in this video. Again, this series is aimed at those of you that are relatively new to all of this, so if you haven't done a build before, I'm not going to assume a lot. There are lots of videos on the channel already. Again, links down below to things like the series. Now, before I get too far into this, I need to say a big thank you to Drone Authority for the help with this series. Drone Authority were a shop that's been around for quite a long time that was actually purchased at the end of summer and has reopened on the 1st of December 2023 with a massive amount of stock. So if you were a Drone Authority customer and you haven't bought with them for a while because the website's essentially been closed, do check out the link. Or if you've been trying to get hold of something else from one of the other stores here in the UK and it's not in stock, go and have a look at Drone Authority. They may have it. So with that said, let's get a little bit more into what FPV is. Now, at a very basic level, there are two types of FPV. First is what's called analog. That's the one that's been around for a very long time. Doesn't give you very high resolution in the goggles, but is... A little bit cheaper to get into. Lots of us still have analog equipment about. We'll talk about how you would attach analog equipment into this model that we've just made. And then the other way is via the HD systems. And there are lots of HD systems around. There's the original DJI stuff, there is HD0, there's the new DJI stuff, which is the O3 Air units, and there's also something called Walk Snail. I personally like Walk Snail. But let's get into the detail of where you would connect the stuff, because the flight controller itself has a lot of pads on it. And they're very good at also showing you in the instructions where everything is going to connect. But for simplicity, I've done a couple of diagrams here to explain how that's actually going to work. So first of all, let's talk about how to add analog FPV into this particular quadcopter that we've just built. There are two separate discrete parts. There's a camera that goes at the front of the model, and there's something called a video transmitter, commonly referred to as a VTX if you're reading stuff online. The VTX's job is to take the image from typically the flight controller and then transmit it over an antenna, which isn't shown here in this image, so you can receive the video in your goggles. Now, the way that analog works is a little bit different from how HD works, because the camera typically has three connections coming out the back. That's normally a 5 volt and ground. There's also the video input, so the video is taking the image, and then the video comes into the flight controller. The flight controller then adds things like the on-screen display, and that's real-time information about things like your battery status, things like the amount of current that's been used, the flight mode that you're in, the attitude of the model, all kinds of different things can be shown. That's actually overlaid by the controller itself, and then it's that video is sent to the video transmitter along with a power and ground. And flight controllers like this will actually produce 9 volts, a nice clean 9 volt supply from the battery that also runs the video transmitter as well. The video transmitter then sends that via the antenna out to your goggles. There's an additional connection here, this little blue wire. That blue wire is there because what you can actually do is control both the channel band and the power of the VTX by sending commands over that extra wire. And the two protocols that you're going to read about are called Smart Audio and Tramp. Now the way this works is that you'll notice here on the flight controller it says T1 and R1. And this flight controller is quite clever. It's actually grouping the individual outputs together for specific purposes. So all of this stuff down here is all for video transmission of these pads. T1 and R1, that is called UART1. And that UART 
depending on the type of video transmitter you have, will be set to smart audio or tramp. Smart audio tends to be the most common choice for most of the setups that I bump into these days. Tramp is used a little bit less. But that means then, using the flight controller, you can tell the video transmitter to be in low power mode until the flight controller is armed, and then it will go up to whichever power setting you want. Or if you are flying with friends, you might want to be on different channels so that you can't see each other's video, which is kind of how they want it to work. It means that you can change the channel and band by using this connection via the on-screen display and the menu that's part of the on-screen display that's part of things like Betafly and iNav. Now, there's no problems about mixing and matching different manufacturers. So uh, having a run cam or Cadix camera up here and having a SpeedyB or um, TBS or whatever video transmitter at the bottom, you can use whichever you want. All the analog stuff at this point is pretty much interchangeable. A little bit different when we talk about HD. The HD system wiring is very different. And what you'll notice here is the camera in the HD system is not connected to the flight controller at all. The way that the on-screen display is added to the digital system is via two cables going into T1 and R1. That same UART1 is still used for the control, if you want to think of it, of the video transmitter actually sending telemetry into the digital VTX. And that telemetry is then used to create the on-screen display. So unusually, rather than the camera be connected to the flight controller, it connects directly into the video transmitter that then sends that image along with the telemetry being sent via the flight controller out through the antenna and into the goggles. Over here on the right-hand side, a couple of examples of HD systems you might see. This one is one of the older DJI V1 Air units. The reason it's here is because that is a slightly odd setup uh, now for beta flight. The one below it is the one that we're about to set up. This is a Walksnail Avatar HD kit version 2. But you see here both of the cameras connect directly into the video transmitter themselves. Now most modern systems will need something called MSP display port set for UART1, which is where we have the digital VTX plugged in, and that tells the flight controller that we want it to send the MSP telemetry. And MSP, don't worry about what that stands for, uh, it just basically means it's the standard telemetry going into uh, the digital VTX. And that's the same whether or not it's something like the Walksnail or the HD0 or things like the modern O3 Air units from DJI. The exception here is this old unit. If it's the old one here, it's only working with the old MSP telemetry. So you would set the UART one if you're using one of these, which you're probably not if you're building a new one these days. You're going to set that for DJI V1. So what we'll do is we'll actually install and set up the Walksnail unit into this model. So let's go into the bench and let's do that wiring, the setup in Betaflight, and I'll show you it working. So I've taken the top off the quadcopter so that we can get to the pins that we need. And the pins that we need are all going to be down here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of soldering. I might have to move the receiver just out the way so I can get to everything and do it relatively easily. In terms of the HD system, this is the one that I'm going to be using. This is the Walksnail HD Kit V2, the Avatar system, and this is how it comes in the box. The main part that we kind of had a quick look at in the pictures is the actual Avatar unit itself, along with a camera that's gonna go at the front connected to it. At the side, there is the connections for both the cable that you would get with it. We'll see in a minute, there's a bind button, and there's also separate pads that you can go to too. This little pad at the back, this is actually for the antenna, and this will come out the back of the model, so we'll have to connect that. The only other things in here that we're really gonna need, there are some screws that we're gonna need to actually screw it into place. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And there is also a little cable. Now, this little cable is really important. There's two of them. There's one which is used to connect to it over USB and update it. We don't need that quite yet, but we will find this one very handy because this is 
got the four connections on that we need and they're color coded which is great because the little manual that's inside the box tells us which color is which now this is going to plug into the side like that and then those four wires are what we're going to make off to the nine volts ground and UART one that we've just had a look at in the diagrams so how's it going to fit inside the model well because this has been designed to support systems like this it's going to be relatively straightforward the vtx the digital video transmitter let's just take this cable off for the moment just to make this slightly easier is going to sit here and then the cable for the camera is going to go over the top of the flight controller and then the camera itself is going to be mounted right in the nose and the cable is just long enough the cool thing is, is that there are actually mounting holes for the screws to go through because these little things here on the avatar unit are designed to hold it in place. The other part that's worthwhile mentioning here is this big hole is actually for a heat sink that is going to help keep these HD units cool. This is one of the challenges with the HD systems. They tend to run quite hot. And looking in the box of bits, this is actually what the heatsink looks like. It's this little anodized piece. That is gonna drop into that hole like that. And that is going to help the unit keep cool. It's quite a neat little design choice. So all I need to do is out of all these screws in this little bag that came with the unit, is find ones that are gonna go through the bottom of the frame and into those holes and I need to make off the four connections onto those pads, which are going to be the nine volt ground and the T1 and R1 pads. As with the CRSF receiver, make sure that the nine volt goes to the nine volt and the ground goes to the ground, but swap over transmit and receive pin. So the transmit pin on here is gonna to go to the receive pin on here. So R1 is gonna to go to the transmit pin. The receive pin on here is gonna to go to T1. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. The only thing I'm going to do while I have my soldering iron on, I have also installed a little buzzer here at the front. I'm just going to connect that up so that the buzzer can sound. That's a handy thing if it ever comes down in long grass and you can't find it. So let me start putting this together and we'll come back and have a quick look. So here it is all put together. I've installed the Walksnail avatar here at the back. That's been held in place by four of the shortest screws. I have routed the camera to the front, so the camera is also protected. I've made it so that the lens is slightly recessed and mounted it so that if it hits anything, hopefully the camera isn't the thing that's gonna take the brunt. Uh, the camera cable is routed over the top of the flight controller. That's the black one. The other thing is the uh, buzzer i have soldered that in place and i have plugged in those four wires that we have soldered onto the nine volt ground and the t1 and r1 pads so it should be in good shape again i would recommend triple check that you have the ground and nine volts the right way around the red wire from the dji or walks nail or hd zero system or whatever is going to the plus nine volts pin and the black one is going to the ground that tends to be the convention i've also popped on the antenna at the back used a little cable tie just to keep it nice and secure now we need to tell beta flight that we want to use uh, the walk snail system so we're going to have to plug this in so let's plug the usb cable into the flight controller first plug it into the computer and then what we need to do is go into the ports tab. And this is where a lot of the activity goes on. So UART 1 is what we need to focus on for this flight controller. Again, the number of the UART corresponds to the number after the T and R pins. So we're using T1 and R1 here at the bottom. So that's what we need to focus on. Now, if again, you were just using the original DJI V1 stuff, you'd just turn MSP on here. That would be all you needed to do. If you were using something like the analog kit, you'll see here, there's all these different VTX options. VTX is, uh, you set that for smart audio. If you'd wired in an analog VTX, talk smart audio or tramp. We, however, are gonna need the VTX MSP plus display port. And that is going to tell this that this is going to be a digital system to output it. We're going to save and reboot. 
Now that should also set a couple of other things, but we'll test it to make sure it's working. Go back into ports to make sure that's stuck and it has, that's great. In the configuration tab, we need to make sure that the OSD is enabled and it is. And then finally, we need to go into the OSD tab itself and we need to tell the system that we are going to be using HD and then set all the system pieces as you want. And you can kind of drag the bits around on the screen. You can kind of select it and, and move things around. Once you've done that, click on save. Now with the version of Betaflight that I'm currently using, there are a couple of extra things that we could do with setting up and checking that are set. Hopefully in future versions of Betaflight by the fact we've chosen MSP DisplayPort and we've also turned on HD in the OSD tab, these things will be set. But without these couple of things, the on-screen display for Walksnail isn't going to work. So there's these two things that you need to set for DisplayPort. I will put a link in the description down below. You need to put both of them in the CLI and hit enter. And then that way, when you reboot, it'll all work. What we can do is we can unplug this from the computer and we can then bind the walks now unit to the goggles. Now the way that works is the little bind button on the on the side and this little bind button on the goggles. Uh, you press both of them and it will bind and then you are good. You will have everything working. If you don't, the most common issue is that the transmit and receive pins from the walks now unit to the T1 and R1 pads are the wrong way around. Just swap those over and give it another go. That's the most common issue that I tend to see. And now we have a HD system installed into the model. All I need to do is to replace the top deck and wait for a nice sunny day and start charging my batteries. So there we have it. That's the end of the main part of the series. We've taken a box of bits and built a quadcopter out of it. We have done everything, including now added some HD FPV goodness to it as well. Hopefully if you've been new to this, that hasn't been too overwhelming and the speed that I've gone at has meant you can follow along. It's actually easier now to make a quadcopter like this than it ever has been before, particularly if you are smart about the choices for the frame, ESC, flight controller and motors. It'll just go together as smoothly and as easily as this. Again, links down below to all the rest of the series if you're just tuning in now, but also to links to places like Drone Authority that have been helping with this series too. Big thank you to them for providing a lot of the kit that I've used as part of this build. If you have any particular questions, then do pop them down below. If there's enough interest or questions from you, the viewers, then I might do one supplemental video where I'll do like an FAQ and answer the specific questions that you might have about why certain things were done in certain ways. But if you've been following along and doing exactly what I did on this build, you should have got to the same point where you now have a quadcopter that all you need are some charged batteries, your goggles and radio, and a nice sunny day. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.